Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. If you just tuned into my channel, I'm a watch collector, a watch enthusiast, basically I'm addicted to watches. And on my channel, I'll be sharing my passion for watches using 4K content. I'll be discussing and showing you brilliant timepieces ranging from Seiko to Patek Philippe. So guys, if you enjoy my reviews, please subscribe to my channel, make sure to hit the notification bell and follow me on Instagram. So guys, as promised, here is the review of the Rolex Submariner Date Reference 16610 LV aka Kermit. I was on a search for a flat 4. The fat or flat 4 starts with the Y serial up to the F serial. I don't want to quote the exact figures. There's a very good reference from the Watch Club website. I don't want to repeat what's on the website. I'll keep a link in the description below. But for all collectors, the true flat 4 would be a Y serial, which is a 2003. Why did I not pull the trigger on a Y serial? Instead, I got this one. But to be honest, I've kept a lookout for the Kermit for a while. I would say roughly from April of this year. And Every single week, sometimes a couple of times a week, I've saved the search on Chrono24. I checked out lots of websites. I've visited dealers in the UK and there was always a missing part. For example, I found one from a well-known dealer in the UK, but did not have the paperwork. I found another one with the paperwork, but it did not have the matching hand tag. On Chrono24, the ones I was able to find either had scuffs on the bezel or it's been polished or it's missing something. So I never gave up I kept looking and looking and one day I saw this and what actually attracted me to this watch exactly is that it had the looks of a flat 4 which is the oval O on the Rolex and the spacing as well and then the Swiss made written at the 6 o'clock is between the 28 and the 32 markers but of course the bezel will not be a flat 4. The second box that it ticked was that it had a matching hand tag and the third one which was an important one it was unpolished never been polished never been serviced fourth point which mattered to me a lot and it was the make or break the fact that it was from the original owner so what do you get when you buy from the original owner you get the receipts you get the full set and i mean full complete set every little booklet hang tag anchor and i thought to myself you know what i can live with this i paid 40 percent of what i would have paid for a y serial it's a no-brainer i pulled the trigger as you saw from last week's vlog i picked it up from new york city and for you who are wondering yes i did check the movement yes i did check the serial numbers i cross-referenced everything 2019 coming to an end looking back at it it was a special year although we didn't really see any major releases from any of the brands including patek ap and rolex but why is it important to me is because i was able to focus on this neo vintage watch collection and i was able to pull three neo vintage watches all from the original owners i've sent both to service this will definitely be going to service. I'm still contemplating whether to get it polished so it'll look like a brand new watch and I can enjoy it. A part of me says not to polish it. I'm still reluctant, but I'm definitely sending it for a service. And you know what that means, guys? That means I'm going to give you my full review, my full feedback with all three watches being sent to Rolex for a service, what was done, how much I paid, the full service experience, and my honest review as always. With that long introduction out of the way, I just thought I'd share with you my my thoughts and the process of why I bought this watch. Let's go ahead and start the full unboxing. To some of you it might bore you to see the box and papers but I feel the box and papers and the things that come with it is as important as the watch. Opening up the box guys we are presented with the anchor. The receipt from the authorized dealer. A couple of Rolex booklets and we're gonna start with the anchor taking it out of the pouch it says 300 meters Rolex Oyster on one side on the other it says 1000 feet and Rolex Oyster again And this is one important document that was a make or break for this purchase, and it's the receipt. It 
So looking closely, back in 2005, the 5th of March to be exact, the owner of this watch paid $5,167. So that tells you something about Rolex watches, passing it down to my kids and them passing it down to their kids. Imagine what this piece of paper would mean, let's say in 50 or 60 or 100 years from today. Even the receipt from his card, I don't know what he paid with, but you can see there it's quite faded, which again feels like a nice touch. Next is the Rolex Submariner booklet whereby they have beautiful photos and reference points and a bit of history and this is what I like about the old school style back in the day they never used to have websites and sharing everything online so whatever you receive in your hand that's how the brand actually shows off what it has Nowadays, you can download the e-brochures from the website and watch what they do to your watch during a Rolex service from YouTube, from Rolex website. There is no need for all this information to be presented. And it comes a long way because once again, we're not using as much paper as we used to back in the day. We're looking after the environment, but it's a nice touch to have all this together with your watch. And that's why I still appreciate what Patek Philippe does, which is exactly what Rolex used to do back in the day, whereby they have all the photos all the booklets together stacked up in a nice leather pouch with all the information available. I don't want to bore you with what informations are in the booklets. You can probably see and it tells you back in the day that three authorized dealers including New York, Fifth Avenue, Dallas and Beverly Hills So although the receipt says 2005, but the calendar that was issued is the 2004-2005. When I did my research and my checks about this watch, I was able to tell that although it was a 2004 produced watch because it had an F66 serial, which was in production from early 2004 to early 2005. This was definitely a 2004 produced watch. I'll show you the code on the clasp as well, but looks like it was sitting in the AD for a while. They were not able to sell it until early. 2005 hence why we have the calendar 2004 things in the US is different from Europe or the UK in the US they don't give you a leather wallet they actually give you a paper cover whereby you have the catalogs your guarantee card everything in it in the UK or in Europe we have a leather pouch whereby the papers sit in it including the calendar translation booklet you see and the guarantee card opening up the box we have the maroon hand tag, which used to give you two years warranty back then. I removed two links from my bracelet. Finally, the green tag, which will have your serial number, as you can see at the top, F66. At the bottom left is reference, so 16610LV. To the right, 93250, that's the code for the bracelet. On the top left, in red, is 31J, which is 31 joules. And of course, the bezel protector. That's what I mean, guys, when I say full set. It even has the original bezel protector. Moving to the guarantee card, you can see there it says full two years warranty, dated the 5th of March 2005. On the top, unlike in the UK or Europe, it will be punched in the US, it's printed, and then the style. At the style, you can see the 16610V, V meaning it's green as well. Finally guys, the watch, sorry I've dragged it, but you guys know me, I appreciate the box and papers and everything that comes with the watch as much as I appreciate the watch itself. Well, first of all, this is a very important release. Not only did it mark the 50th anniversary of the Rolex Submariner, this was the first time ever we see the maxi case or maxi dial on the Rolex Submariner. What do I mean by that? It's the hour markers and the hour hand and the minute hand are larger compared to the previous models. As you can see there, it to my Pepsi it looks completely 
completely different. As you can see, the bezel is completely scratch free. Believe it or not, the owner of this guy told me that this watch was more of a safe queen. As I mentioned, it has a Mark III dial, which means that the Swiss made at six o'clock stretches between the 28 to the 32 markers. Another thing you realize is the spacing of Oyster Perpetual Date, as well as the O on the Rolex is oval compared to the round on the other ones. The four is not a flat four. If you haven't seen a flat four, there's a photo of it. That's why you need to be careful because if this watch had a flat four bezel, which is quite impossible to get nowadays because Rolex actually exchange it rather than replace it. What do I mean by that? With the Pepsi that I bought, I bought it as an LN. I went in one day, put it on a Coke, came in next week, put it on a Pepsi. And by paying the premium, which was I think 55 pounds, you're allowed to keep the bezel. So now I have a Pepsi with three different bezels that I can interchange. With the Kermit is different. For example, if I send my watch for a service and I ask them to replace the bezel, they would do what is called as an exchange. And what that means is my bezel needs to be sent back to Switzerland, only then Rolex would dispatch or supply a new bezel. There were stories a year ago that Rolex started putting flat four bezels on serviced Kermits. But you can't be fooled. It's not that easy. Make sure you do your research. Know the information before buying. Lots of Frankenstein watches these days. Just be careful. It took me a good four months. I did my research. I learned what I need to learn. Then I started getting in touch. And this is what watch collection is about. It's the journey. It's the process. It's what you have to go through to buy the watch. To me, the hunt for this Kermit for the last four to five months was more enjoyable than the day that I walked into my authorized dealer, spent half an hour with him, had a nice chat, picked up my hull and came back home. The longer the chase, the more enjoyable it is. As you can see, there are some scratches on the case, a couple of harsh ones as well. On both sides. The bracelet, there's a bit of scuff marks, which are not really bothering me as much, as well as on the clasp. But as you can see, it's never been polished. The crispy Rolex crown on the buckle looks fantastic. Even the inner clasp, as you can see there. The code CL10, which is a code for a 2004 bracelet, which matches the watch perfectly. A closer look on the dial. And the stretch on the bracelet is not too bad. There's a bit of stretch, but nothing major. I've seen worse. The clasp operation is perfect. No problems whatsoever. Two thousand and nineteen made me fall in love with the five digit Rolex watches and having the Kermit, the Pepsi, and the Daytona definitely completes my neo vintage Rolex. I hope you enjoyed this review. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.